Here are the top 14 reasons why you should be buying silver. Number 14, infinite money in a finite world. The irresistible force paradox asks, what happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable object? Our debt-based monetary system must create more debt each and every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before. The more debt money the bankers create, the more profit they have. The more money debt the politicians spend, the more power they have. This sick symbiotic relationship of lender of last resort meets the spender of last resort ensures exponential growth of money. The elite will keep using the power of the printing press to maintain their power, but ultimately this will only accelerate their demise. There is a mathematical inevitable end to this system. As infinite money debt meets the world's finite resources and ultimately the limits of human faith, the more money and debt chasing after fewer goods and services will cause inflation. Ultimately, people's faith in currency will fail worldwide. It will become evident that the elite intend to print the currency into oblivion, ruining the main function of money as a store of value. When this happens, people will throw their depreciating currency at any tangible asset they can get their hands on. Precious metals will be the main beneficiary of this. The frightening thing is that it's not just American citizens that will be affected by this global destruction of paper currency, because this will be the first time in human history in which the entire world has become interconnected and dependent upon this fiat monetary illusion. Stop thinking about another American Great Depression and start thinking about the Dark Ages. My suggestion would be to beat the rush and panic now. Fire! When this current monetary order dies, so will millions if not billions of people as an era of unlimited money comes to an end. Think of the millions that are on food stamps that have no support system to carry them. Think about the billions of dollars in food subsidies ending, food riots, skyrocketing food and fuel prices globally. In this hyperinflationary collapse of the world's money, I predict that up to 90% of your money will go towards food and fuel. Not your mortgage, not your car payments, taxes, tuitions, medical bills, or anything else. Just the basic necessities like food and fuel. Most will not be able to make this transition and unfortunately will die. And that is before the wars, riots, and violence take even more people down. This dramatic shift in life will also prevent people from having children in this turbulence. There will be a scar in the human experience that will be felt for generations. Number 13. The shift from paper assets to tangible assets. Those that understand that there is a major shift out of paper assets into real assets inevitably start with the gut reaction of buying gold. The more I learned about silver, the more I saw that it was the only investment for me and my family. I am more bullish now in 2012 than I was when I bet the house on silver in 2005. When you truly understand the fundamentals behind silver, you will see that it's simply the best investment out there. And I challenge anyone to find me a better investment. First and foremost, the reason why I invested in physical silver is because it is a physical, tangible asset. When I say invest in silver, I do not mean anything else but the real stuff in your hand. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Stay away from SLV, unallocated bullion accounts, mining shares, and stick to the physical. I would hate for you to be right on silver and wrong on the form of silver. We are entering a generational shift out of paper assets into real tangible assets. As I have stated many times in the past, the dollar is mathematically going to collapse and it is the very basis for our entire world economy. The dollar collapse will be the single largest event in human history and will dramatically touch every human being on earth and will leave a scar on generations to come. Yes, it's going to be that big. When the mathematically inevitable collapse happens, all paper assets will be destroyed. This goes for dollars, yen, euro, CDs, munis, T-bills, money markets, insurance policies, pensions, privately owned businesses, structured settlements, social security, dividends, 401ks, IRA, stocks, options, bonds, and even real estate. Without a functioning currency and the uncertainty it brings, Credit grinds to a halt, payments grind to a halt, markets grind to a halt, the world economy grinds to a halt. People panic and this always leads to war. This naturally leads to investors finding value in real tangible assets like commodities. Commodities are real things that we use every day in our life like pork, cotton, corn, oil, and steel. The problems with most commodities is storage. I know for a fact that two of the best asset classes to be in, in terms of real inflation adjusted returns, will be food and fuel. They are most essential to humanity and they are hardest to live without. I strongly recommend people stocking up on preparations before they buy silver. You will need at least a three month supply of food per person as a buffer for the massive global social upheaval we are going to go through with the collapse of the dollar. The problem with investing in most food and fuel is storage issues. 
most food and fuel deteriorates and becomes worthless. Also, storage can be prohibitive because we're talking about some big dollars. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have a grain silo or storage tanks. Unless you're a farmer or an oil baron, this usually rules out many commodities for the average investor. This brings us to metals because they don't deteriorate. For most metals, storage is a big issue. $8,000 will buy you a ton of copper, but just over 4 ounces of gold. This is why precious metals are sought after, because of their rarity and their ability to store so much wealth in a small space. Number 12. Silver is the indispensable metal. The first demand is industrial demand. First and foremost, silver is being used as an industrial metal. Silver is the indispensable metal. Next to oil, silver is the most widely used commodity ever, as it has over 10,000 uses. As technology progresses and expands, silver's usefulness will explode even further. Its unique characteristics are unlike any other commodity in the world. It is the most reflective of all metals, the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity, strongly resists corrosion and oxidation, second most malleable and ductile metal next to gold, and it has recently been discovered to be a very effective antimicrobial and bacterial metal, and is now even being used in the war against cancer. Silver is generally used in small quantities, and its unique characteristics make it irreplaceable. This demand is growing and inelastic to price, which provides a very strong base for the next demand to put some more fuel on the fire. Number 11. Investment demand is growing. The next demand is the growing investment demand. This demand has almost been dead for the past generation of investors. This demand has a Jekyll and Hyde component to it. It has a paper trader component to it that simply wants a horse to bet on. These investors are primarily Anglo-American institutional investors and tend to want the silver price lower. But what they really want is to get big swings in the market. They trade anywhere from 40 to 1,000 paper ounces of silver for every real physical ounce in the market. And they only usually take about 3% of the real physical off the market when it is traded. This institutional demand is still in its early stages and seems content in the paper chase of the trader market. This institutional demand is set to grow not only in acceptance, but in worldwide audience and finally in physical metal. Institutions seem to follow the leader, and when it becomes apparent that silver is up 20% a year while the stock market is flat, it won't take long for these sharks to smell blood in the water, and they'll want more exposure to silver and other commodities. At first, they'll play the paper market, but soon they will want the real thing. Foreign institutional investment demand is quite different than our institutional investment demand. They don't seem interested in playing the paper chase, and they want real physical silver. They seem intent on dumping dollars for real assets. The opening of the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange is a good example of this. During the last bull run of silver in the 80s, only Western nations participated in that market. Since then, there is 10 to 20 times more capital in the world. There are 50% more people living in the world today. And now, all of the world can participate in this silver bull run. China, India, and Russia are leading the charge to buy more and more precious metals. There are a lot of potentially useless dollars floating around the world, and they want real tangible assets in return. This type of foreign institutional investment demand wants higher prices and has the potential for backing the final demand, which will catapult silver into the stratosphere. The final investment demand is private investors. These investors typically want physical and only dabble in the paper trader market. These investors buy and hold and they differentiate themselves from the other demands that specifically want a higher price for their investment. They plan on dumping their toxic paper assets and getting real physical assets outside of the paper chase. These investors are like ants, constantly taking food off the table and storing it for a rainy day. This demand is joining the industrial demand and taking real physical metal off of the market. But unlike the industrial users, the investment demand of private investors strictly want higher prices. Number 10. Monetary demand is insatiable. The final and completely absent demand in this world is monetary demand. Silver has absolutely no monetary demand in the world. It is used in things and invested for protection against inflation, but nowhere in the world can you just buy things with it. I believe that with the mathematically inevitable collapse of the worldwide currencies, this new monetary demand will push silver through the sky. Some countries or local communities will monetize silver, and as history has shown, money goes to where it's most appreciated. All of humanity will be crying out for real money as they try to recover from the fiat something for nothing dream. How will quadrillions of fiat paper money flow into less than a billion ounces of silver? It's impossible. Paper is poverty. It is the ghost of money and not money itself. Thomas Jefferson. I have seen bright and intelligent men fail to understand that the electronic digits in their computer screens are not real money. They always do get it, 
When you hold an ounce of gold or a hundred ounce bar of silver, it's a frightening aspect of our society that we've become so detached from real money that most of us cannot even comprehend real money. Do yourself a favor this week and go to your local coin shop and just touch an ounce of gold or a big fat shiny bar of silver. Then look at that wad of paper in your wallet or worse the digits in your bank account and tell me honestly where would you rather invest your future. This third and final demand of monetary demand is insatiable as no one can ever have too much money. Number 9. Silver's price is inelastic. This is what makes its price inelastic. All commodities have a self-correcting price mechanism except for silver. If a commodity's price rises too high, demand drops off as people seek substitutes or supply rises to meet the demand, thus lowering the price. This mechanism does not exist for silver. Silver is typically used in very small quantities and high-tech components, and there is no substitute for it. So a manufacturer or customer will have to absorb any price increase. Silver is now starting to be used in clothing to reduce odors caused by bacteria. What is remarkable about it is that by weight, silver represents only one forty thousandth of the total of inputs on that shirt. When used in such tiny quantities, silver's price is almost irrelevant. Over 20 million tons of polyester sportswear produced every year, the textile industry consumes 1,200 tons of silver annually. That's 38 million ounces. Let's say, for example, the average computer contains one-tenth of an ounce of silver. That would mean that there is about $3 of silver in the computer. Now let's assume the computer in question costs $1,500. If silver were to go to $1,000 an ounce, the same silver in that computer would be $100. Do you think Apple Computer is going to throw its arms up in the air and cry that they can no longer sell computers because silver is too expensive? No, they will raise the price of the computer and probably advertise that it has the most silver in it. Do you think the average consumer is going to say, I would buy a computer at $1,500, but at $1,600, no way. No, they'll find a way to get the extra $100 so they can read the latest online news about Miley Cyrus. It's not just consumer products that are at risk. It's the companies, the industries, the nations that are at risk. Apple has a market cap of $400 billion. If a strategic commodity like silver starts having shortages, their billion dollar empire is endangered. Companies will go into panic buying securing any amount of physical silver they can because their entire value added business is dependent upon it. They will not be buying SLV or certificates of deposits. Only the real physical silver will suffice. They will whip out their huge checkbook and stock up. Now you can see why rising prices actually increase demand. And it's not just the computer industry that's relying upon silver. It's the multi-billion dollar industries like energy, medical, and the military. And soon the banking industry, as their debt money system collapse. This directly affects national destiny. 